Welcome to the War Academy channel. Today, we are going to see, how was the rise and fall of the most famous characters of the Third Reich, which reached the peak of its power with the fall of France, and after which, gradually fell from grace, until becoming one of the most hated people of the moment a few years later. However, the origins of Hermann Göring are not in the Second World War, as it was during the Great War when this man stood out as a fighter pilot, becoming a flying ace with 22 confirmed kills. It is striking that already at this time, there are testimonies from his fellow aviators in which it is said that Göring was an arrogant and boastful person. After the surrender of Germany, Hermann Göring was out and about, serving as a private pilot and organizing air shows. In 1922, he was one of the first to join Hitler's National Socialist Party, and due to his fame and organizational skills, he soon rose through the ranks. His bond with Hitler grew stronger and finally, when Hitler became Chancellor of Germany in 1933, Göring was appointed minister without office and president of the Reich Parliament. As was evident, and due to his popularity as a pilot during the First World War, he was appointed Supreme Commander of the Luftwaffe at the same time it was created in 1935. This position was held by Göring until a few days before the end of the Second World War. But despite all the positions that we have already named, among which we have skipped many other minor positions, Göring also held the position of President of the Reich Economic Ministry during the years 1937 to 1938. This increased his popularity even more, because now he was also associated as one of those responsible for the German economic miracle. However, his greatest position, and with it the height of his fame, was yet to come. This came with the great successes of Germany, in the first campaigns of the Second World War, and had its culmination after the surrender of France in the summer of 1940. It was specifically at the beginning of the campaign in Poland, when Hitler appointed him as his successor. In the position of Führer of all Germany, if something happened to him. Approximately a year later, once France was defeated, he was also awarded the title of Marshal of the Great German Reich, a position that was exclusively created for him, and that made him the highest ranking military officer in all of Germany. With this, Hermann Göring became one of the most famous and acclaimed people of the Third Reich, whose popularity even rivaled that of Hitler. However, this did not last long and suffered a major setback during that same summer of 1940, before the defeat of the Luftwaffe in the Battle of Britain. It was around this time that Göring delivered his famous radio address in which he stated that, if a single enemy aircraft were to fly over German soil, at that time it would no longer be called Hermann Göring, and his name would be Meyer. Although with the first successes of the Barbarossa operation he was able to recover his prestige, Göring had his final outcome in the Battle of Stalingrad in which it had been demonstrated that once again, his promises were totally impossible. However, despite the criticality of the situation in Stalingrad, what sank his reputation the most were the indiscriminate bombings of the German civilian population that began to intensify after 1943. These massive bombings, before which the Luftwaffe proved unable to contain them, not only destroyed cities, but also prevented the correct development of the war on the Eastern Front, by reducing the production of both war material and fuel. Göring was repeatedly accused of command negligence and inaction, often failing to take reports of enemy air capability seriously. To this, we must add the addiction that Göring suffered with morphine, since he dedicated more time to his personal leisure and hobbies than to managing his charges. Little by little he was removed from the important conferences organized by Hitler, and it was around the beginning of 1944 that Göring's reputation had completely sunk. This made the Reich Marshal spend even more time on his hobbies such as hunting or the acquisition of works of art and property, at the same time that Germany was retreating on all fronts. With the Soviets close to Berlin, Hermann Göring made his last appearance in Hitler's bunker on April 20, 1945, at which point both men said goodbye forever. Göring then proceeded to his residence in the Bavarian Alps, in which he was concentrating all his artistic and other possessions, 
which were being moved from all his dwellings. That same April 22nd, was the day that Hitler had recognized in a conference in his bunker, that the war was lost, and that he intended to commit suicide there. It was at this time that Goering brought out the document, which left him legally in command of Germany in the event that Hitler died, or was left in a position where he lost his freedom of action. This led him to send a telegram to Hitler, in which he asked for permission to assume the position of Führer of all Germany, which he would occupy as a substitute in case he was given the go-ahead, or automatically if he did not receive a response to the night of April 23rd. Much has been written about the intention of this note and there are those who see it as something natural, while others take it for a declaration of a coup d'etat. In any case, this was taken in the worst possible way by Hitler's circle inside the bunker, and the response sent back to him was if he did not want to be executed for high treason, he should leave all his posts. Immediately. Following this, a public announcement was made to the German people that Hermann Göring had had to resign due to ill health. From this moment on, an SS unit went to his home in the Alps and placed him under house arrest. A few days later, on April 26th, he had to be transferred to the heart of the Austrian Alps because the Bavarian area was under attack. By May 5th, a Luftwaffe unit that was in the area freed him from the SS guards and this allowed him to move freely again. A day later, he was finally arrested by US troops in a town somewhat north of where he was, also within the Austrian Alps. This action almost certainly saved his life at the time, as Martin Bormann had issued an execution order for Goring in one of his last actions. Once captured, he was transferred to a high-ranking prison camp in a hotel in Luxembourg. There he began to be treated for his morphine addiction, and was put on a strict diet, that made him lose almost 30 kilos of weight in a very short time. For the month of September, he was finally transferred to Nuremberg, awaiting trial in that same city. His trial lasted a total of 218 days, until he was sentenced to death by hanging. After this sentence, Goring requested that his death be by firing squad, which was more dignified for a soldier, but this request was denied. Although no exact date was set for his death, Goring had to spend many days of uncertainty in his cell waiting for his end to come at any moment. At this point, we have to remember, that the former Reichsmarschall had been isolated from his companions, because he had tried to promote unrest on more than one occasion. Finding himself in this situation, Goring gained the trust of the American guard who was in charge of his cell, coming to have long conversations with him and a practically friendly treatment. Due to this, he was able to be warned when it would finally be the day that they were going to hang him and he was able to sneak a ballpoint pen with a hollow interior, in which a cyanide capsule was found, into his cell. A few hours before they came for him, Goring took this vial and ended his life on the night of October 15, 1946. This event generated a great stir and was catastrophic for the Allied High Command, which could not obtain the much desired image of Goring on the gallows. With this action, Harman had somehow gained the upper hand on them, and had the ability to come to choose the manner and time of his death. Finally, his body was cremated and his ashes thrown into the Isar River which is a tributary of the Danube. As we pointed out at the beginning, Harman Goring has gone down in history as one of the most corrupt characters of the time, who embodied in his person all kinds of negative slogans that make him be rejected by both conflict fans who are pro-allies and even by the pro-Germans. In any case, and as a final question, we want to launch the following question to be answered by each one of you. Would the Luftwaffe have obtained a more favorable result in the Second World War, if they had had another commander-in-chief who had not been Hermann Goring? You can leave your opinion in the comment box. That's all, subscribe and support this channel if you like this program, and see you in the next video.